It's Don here from the board. Thank you for coming along and checking out another one of our videos. Today I'm going to be doing a review on the Taobao clone of the VEA. Now the keyboard that I'm talking about is a split staggered keyboard with a macro kind of setup on one side of it. It's relatively cheap and it's an acrylic construction. Now I bought this off Taobao sort of unintentionally as I've mentioned previously and just to recap for those who may not have seen the earlier videos that I had I was part of a Taobao group buy where somebody else on the buy had actually made the order for the actual VEA keyboard first but they had changed their mind too late for the warehouse to actually accept the return and I thought you know I've got a little bit of spare cash it wasn't terribly expensive I did have an interest in split keyboards, especially staggered split keyboards, so I took over that purchase from them. Now, the only difference in regards to getting uh, the keyboard that they had ordered versus if I'd ordered it myself personally was really a choice of switches. I don't have any linear keyboard switches, and getting this one, which came with Gateron Reds, it's not a big deal, um, but there had been talk about whether the actual clone came with a switch top removal because if it did then all I needed to do was actually do a swap of the stem and then voila I could get whatever it was that I wanted so I thought you know I'll help a friend out and I basically took over the buy finally got it in and I got to have a look at it at the Sydney meetup very briefly and then of course when I got home and you know I think for the price that you pay it's actually really nice um, it's great value and we'll go into a little bit more detail right now. The first thing that I want to do though is I'm going to switch over to my monitor that way. I always get confused because my cameras um, are mirrored. And we'll actually have a look at the listing for um, the, the actual buy itself. Now obviously there's the, the address is up over here. Um, but if you do really want it, I can provide it as a link later on. Um, I do apologize because I have been sick. And as you can hear, my wife's also been coughing. Because uh, that's just what happens when you have a small child. Um, <clears throat> yes, so here is the actual listing. And as you can see, um, it's only about 78 to to $100 Australian. Obviously, if you're going to convert that to a different currency, it's going to be even cheaper. But then you're going to add shipping on top of that and it depends on what options you have. It's got a neat little picture, it's got like a, a metal braided cable in the picture, it's got keycaps, but what I ended up with did not have keycaps in it. So you can see it's got some English in it that says, um, does not include Gatorons, it's got RGB bottom lamp, no button lamp, um, it's acrylic without raising, so it doesn't have angled feet or anything like that, foot pad, but if you want it, you can always get it added on. It's got some indicator lights as well um, and yeah it's not terribly detailed so had I tried to buy this myself it might have been a different experience but because someone had already made the order for the specific model and the switches and I just paid for it instead of them it, it turned out okay for me but obviously you do have a couple of options when you make the buy in regards to switch types and stuff like that so there you go now I'm gonna switch back over to the desktop Get rid of that, turn it on, and here is the unit itself put together. And it came with the uh, sort of mini B to mini B connector, but as you notice, it's actually got like a braided on it rather than the metallic, so that's one difference between uh, the, the listing pictures and this. The I don't know if it was really an option that you can actually get the metallic or not, but this is just what came as part of the price that I paid. Now. I've got a ruler here, so you can see, you know, you're talking about what, 30 to there, probably about 34 or so, um, 36 centimeters. But if I take my full size keyboard, which is hanging off the screen, and uh, I sort of put that over there, you can see that it is about the same size, roughly, as a 10 keyless keyboard. But in terms of the the height of it 
it's actually very similar to a full-size keyboard simply because it's got the fatter edge from the acrylic lead case even though the function row of the switches is actually condensed with the rest of the alphas. Now, a couple of things to look at and notice is first and foremost, it's put together with uh, two millimeter metric countersunk screws. Uh, they're only around the top and the bottom. They don't have any on the sides, which I thought was a little bit weird. Um, probably wouldn't have minded if they actually did have some on the sides. The acrylic's relatively well cut. There's no sort of really jagged edges and whatnot. And counting the number of layers here, we've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So there's a thin black, there's a thick black on the top and bottom, and then there's a, a thick clear, a thin black, a thin clear, and a second thin clear as well. Um, you can see the standoffs as well in sort of how it's been constructed and it does come with just some very simple silicon feet on the bottom. Um, there's like a hole over here and here which I think is probably where the angled feet would sit if you actually got the angled feet option because on the other side you've also got the same holes. I guess you could probably also get or make and develop a tenting kit that it would potentially sit on so you can actually get the tenting that you want. Um, you got LED indicators over here and the thing that really struck me that was quite funny when I started looking at this in detail was there was some debate about whether it had switch top opening or not because some people said it did, other people said it didn't and I discovered the reason for that is because the manufacturer, the OEM selling this on Taobao doesn't know about keyboards, doesn't know anything about building keyboards in that context because they assembled the order of the plates incorrectly. So if we look at the actual top plate we can see that there's a big cutout here for stabilizers and it does support switch opening on the stabilized enter and it supports the fat enter, the big enter, the ISO enter um, because it's got the cutout appropriate for it. You can also see here on the split spacebar it's got the cutout that supports switch opening. Interesting though, is if you actually tilt it sideways and you look a little bit closer, see if I can get it to come into focus. Maybe not, but we don't really need it to be in terribly good focus anyway, because if you look over here, you'll see in the black acrylic layer, underneath the clear switch plate layer, it's got switch cutouts. It's got switch opening cutouts. So when we look at it side on, this black layer actually should be swapped with the top switch plate layer and it would provide you with switch opening. So whoever built this being sold as a pre-built keyboard, you can see you can see the cutouts right there and there is not aware of this and they've gone and built it just willy-nilly layering it however they like thinking that you know having the clear layer on top should be right but if you bought this as a kit because there is actually links on Taobao for this as a kit you would obviously build it in the correct order so that the switch openable plate layer is on top allowing you to actually open your switch tops now how does that impact me uh, <sighs> I could go to the effort of desoldering this board so I can have the switches in the right, uh, sorry, the, the plates in the right layer so then I can actually open the switch tops. Now, the only reason why I would do that is if I want to do some mods, but if I'm going to go to the effort of taking this whole thing apart anyway, then I could do my mods and put in whatever switches I want instead of being Gator on Reds. Now, that is an option. I haven't actually decided if I wanted to do that or not. Uh, it seems fairly simple. None of the acrylic plates are cracked, so it's just a matter of desoldering everything after I take the layers apart. Um, so, now I wanted to go through also in terms of its weight. Like the quality feels all right. It's fairly, you know, sturdy. Like it's got a little bit of flex, but you can kind of expect that because it's acrylic and it is a sandwich 
type of case. Nothing's cracked, thankfully, from me just doing that little bit of flexing. So what I've got over here is uh, our kitchen scales, which are pretty good. Good quality scales. Uh, European, maybe. Something like that. And let's just check out how much it actually weighs as well without keycaps for those who might care about its weight. So, one side, 359, almost 360 grams, and then the second half on top. So you're looking at 731 grams. Uh, what is that in pounds? It's almost two pounds. Is that right? No. Yeah, one pound's 448, because it's like one kilo is 2.25 pounds. So it's just under two pounds. Um, could do the mac the accurate the I could do the maths more accurately if I really felt inclined, but it's not really that necessary. And then of course, once you actually add the cable on top of that, it's just a tiny little bit more at 739. Now I think our scales actually does have different modes on on it as well, doesn't it? It doesn't mix. Um, oh, there we go, grams to pounds. So uh, let's see if that worked or not. Um, press that button and we're in ounces. And why is it in ounces? What's this, what's this mode now? It's back to grams. Alright, so I guess it's going to be in ounces. Um, so let's just reset that. <laughs> so now it's measuring in ounces. Oh, there we go. Clear. Alright. And so for those who don't live by the metric system, um, it is one pound 9.75 ounces. So one pound and nine and three quarter ounces without keycaps. Rightio. So that's a, a very quick look in terms of its physical aspects, its physical appearance, um, its physical sort of quality. And let's get in a little bit more detail in regards to uh, what it behaves like. So of course, we're just going to jack in the two halves, the connectors, right there. And then with the Mini B comes over onto this side. And it lights up. So that's, that's pretty bright, that uh, orange indicator. What I've being able to tell and research about this is it also runs off bootmapper but before we get started on to bootmapper uh, I'm gonna switch over to the monitor and I'm going to open up switch header so this is uh, the elite keyboards switch header which is really great for checking out things like um, chattering bounce time and stuff like that as well as seeing what keys work and what keys don't so I'm just going to do a quick button mash to highlight everything that is actually on this keyboard there we go got that row and you'll be able to see the default key map that comes as part of this keyboard wait why is that row not there we go, uh, and B should be down there, and then we've got some over here, we've got a control, uh, and then our macro keys on the side. So this is everything that is default mapped on this keyboard. So if you are happy with the way that it's currently mapped, you would never have to actually get into bootmapper and change them. What we're seeing here is of course you've got all your function keys almost all of your standard alphas for a 60 percent except for the windows and write menu key you've got insert delete and page down only up down left right arrow keys uh, which are over here and then you've got numpad from one to zero which is actually mapped to the macro key kind of block on the left hand side of the keyboard okay so what I'm talking about there is these keys here is actually one two three four five six seven eight nine zero on that side the windows um, the right windows and menu keys on this side so you've got 
a, another spacebar, Alt, and then something that's happening over here is actually related to function layer keys. And then the extra switch here is also a function switch. Now, like I said, it uses Boot Mapper, and I'll, I'll get into Boot Mapper and just show that in a second. But we do have um, LED indicators that turn on and off here as well. So you've got um, your scroll lock and uh, your caps lock as well happening there as well. So it's a bit hard to see because the camera is wigging out with how bright it is, but it's red for the caps lock. And then there's a purple for the scroll lock that turns on and off there as well. And that's kind of just a power. Interesting though, is if you unjack one of the halves, it starts to flash, I believe. It did earlier. Or, or something like that. Um, maybe. <laughs> there's my daughter waking up from a nap, a little bit upset. Um, now, actually at this point in time, it's, it's good to, uh, for me to just take the moment to sort of talk through that. Um, obviously as my daughter's getting older, it's a little bit harder to find a lot of time to do perfect videos without things happening in the background and distractions and noise and things like that. Um, in the past, I've tried to record when traffic's a little bit quieter, for example, but time is always short for everybody. So, so while I would apologize for it, I'm just going to have to say that future videos, you know, if there's more noise, if there's more distraction, if my wife's working in the background or my daughter's making a fuss, um, I'm going to be okay with that and living with that simply because that's just life. And that's how I can integrate my hobby in doing videos with family. Now, of course, if you don't like that, um, sorry that you feel that way. And I'm sorry if, if it causes you to not watch our videos or, uh, you know, unsubscribe from the channel and so on and so forth. But I do hope that you can understand and appreciate that, you know, as a hobby, um, I do the best that I can with the time that I have and to make sure that I can still do everything as my family as well. So let's keep rolling. Moving on to looking at um, the keyboard itself. So I've just shown the LEDs there, and it does have underglowy features. Um, for some reason, it's not showing very well. There we go. Okay, so you got some underglow that's happening between the layers, and it's currently set to automatically cycle between colors. So it's got RGB underglow, and it just it just does its thing by default, and it just switches colors and cycles colors. When you go into Boot Mapper, though, so I have never used Boot Mapper before I got this keyboard, and I've only played with it very briefly. Uh, I read a little guide that I found through uh, a Mastrop comment that described using Boot Mapper, and I found it really helpful. So I might chuck that link in as well if people ask for it. If people don't, you can always Google it yourself. But I'm going to switch back over to my other screen, and then uh, I'm just going to bring up Boot Mapper. So there is Boot Mapper itself. Now, oops, wrong one. Um, what you can see over here is what you can do is I already had this open from before. So there's a download button um, over here in the top left corner where you hit download and what it does is it connects to the keyboard and it pulls down what's currently mapped to the keyboard. Then what you can do is you can see exactly what's being set up where in the columns and the rows and there's of course a full-on grid in regards to what kind of options you have to be able to remap and then when you're happy with it you can hit the upload and it sends it back and reboots the keyboard this toggle boot mapper thing right you can turn it on and off where the tick box is uh, the concept of this is rather than trying to figure out what and where it is in the grid on the software is you hit toggle boot mapper and it locks out your keyboard and then you press the actual switch on the keyboard so for example I wasn't sure what was going on with these other keys when I started using um, the switch hitter so I hit one of those mysterious switches and it automatically took me over to row 13 column 1 function and that's what ah okay so that's meant to be a function key and similarly so any other key that you're not sure of all you have to do is actually press on the keyboard and it will take you to that switch and then you can go, all right, well, I want to remap that to whatever. 
So if I went over to these macro switches and it said pad one, and I want to change that to, you know, say page up, page down or whatever, then I could hit that and it's gone and changed it on the actual boot mapper's page up. And then if I hit upload, it will turn that now into a page up. So that is as simple as it gets with using boot mapper. It's pretty powerful for somebody who doesn't need to do a lot of, you know, configuration changes, but you can have your function layers, up to three function layers on this particular uh, PCB, I believe. And then you can get a little bit more into doing macros and so on and so forth. So that's a very quick look at Boot Mapper as well in relation to using this VEA clone. Rightio. Now, gets a little bit confusing when you're running uh, multi windows, whatnot. Right, so that's pretty much a overview a look at the the construction um, some of the issues in regards to say if you bought it pre-built as opposed to if you built it as a kit I know that people have said that if you buy it as a kit and it comes as parts um, one of the things is that you can have the risk of the acrylic plates being cracked in shipping in delivery so see it's it's starting to pulse there now and I don't know why that is um, I haven't found anything that's said about it, so I'm not sure if it's, I mean, that's meant to be the, the caps lock. Was it the caps lock? There's something funny going on with this? I don't know. Um, if somebody does know, then they can they can tell me that as well, because that was doing that before, and I wasn't 100% sure what was going on with that. I wonder if it's because it went into the boot mapper, but if I unplug that and put it back in uh, <clears throat> it goes back to normal so there we go so I suspect it might be because of the uh, the boot mapper but uh, a refresh on that plugging it in seems to clear that issue so um, where was I yeah so if you if you get it shipped as a kit to build then you might run the risk of having plates cracked if you don't mind paying perhaps a little bit extra and of course it comes with switches then you can get that but then you have to realize there's a risk that they may have actually set it up incorrectly and put the switch openable layer underneath as one of the sandwich layers as well so where do I go from here uh, I might just see how it goes with the reds when I put some keycaps on it and play with it a little bit because I've never had a linear keyboard before if I don't mind it, then I might just leave it. Otherwise, I may end up doing a little project, taking apart, desoldering, and then trying to put it back together as well. Now, while I was just playing around there, the the stabilizers that it comes with, uh, they feel all right. They're a little bit scratchy. Could probably lube them, but uh, once again, you know, if I'm going to go to the effort of doing that, I might as well do a lot of other mods at the same time. Um, right, yeah. So. 100 bucks plus shipping, Australian that is. I think it's a fantastic deal, especially if you're looking for a split keyboard. And if you didn't want to use it as a split keyboard, you just put the two halves together and it sits pretty well. It's like a normal 65-ish, 75-ish type of keyboard. Um, and it's got holes on the bottom so you can make your own angle tilt or if you wanted to do your own tenting as well. And of course, by the way, you can use Boot Mapper to control the RGB actions, which uh, I haven't bothered playing around with, but it does have options in Boot Mapper for it. So, that's pretty much it. Thank you for checking out the video. If you're interested and you do want the link and you can't find it yourself, uh, let me know. Hit me up in the comments and I'll paste the, the actual links to the VEA clone, as well as to the thread for the Boot Mapper to explain the basics of getting and using Boot Mapper nice and simple if you like the video please hit like if you got friends who are looking for split keyboards pre-built so they don't have to build them themselves and they got that kind of amount of money to spend of course please hit share and let them know and if you've never come across our channel and this is the first time that you've actually seen any of our videos would really love and appreciate it if you hit subscribe we've got heaps of videos covering things all the way from sculpting artisans casting artisans building keyboards building macro pads you know, doing 3D design, diode tools, 
uh, PCB creation, meetups, and all sorts of other things. So there you go. And don't forget, we have our podcast series, which accompany our journey in keyboards with the mechanical keyboard community as well. Radio, I think I've uh, natted long enough. So thank you. And until next time, happy clacking. <laughs>